Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this series we've demonstrated how the standard method for weight loss actually ruins your metabolism. By reducing the calories that we eat we do not reset the body set weight and eventually our bodies slow the metabolism to gain weight back to the BSW. It's very hard for people to wrap their minds around this, especially considering how much we've been conditioned to believe otherwise. So let's look at the opposite, shall we? If cutting calories or under eating doesn't result in long-term weight loss, then it would follow that adding calories or overeating would not result in long-term weight gain. So let's put to bed the world's biggest misconception does overeating make you fat? So just to refresh from our last video, as we reduce calories in, we see an initial weight loss. But after a period of time, we start to see weight regain due to the calorie restriction slowing the metabolic rate. I'll cite a recent study here to reiterate this. As always, the links are in the description for all studies. In the study, 21 subjects were fed a liquid diet consisting of greater than 45% carbohydrates for a year. And TEE, total energy expenditure, aka metabolism, was measured. As we've discussed previously, the subjects initially lost weight, about 10% of the initial body weight. But as we've also seen, this was accompanied by a decrease in TEE. Once again, the body is acting more like a thermostat and trying to gain weight back to the BSW. Cutting calories has done nothing to alter the BSW set point and so is totally fruitless in the long term for weight loss. And to demonstrate how devastating this metabolic slowdown is, the TEE of the subjects was reduced by 500 calories per day almost immediately and lasted for more than a year. One more time. Their metabolism was slowed for more than a year. And yet, people still think that reducing calories in is the way to lose weight. Well, if that were true, then increasing calories in would make you obese, right? Well, that's certainly simple to test. Get a bunch of people, overfeed them, and sit back as they all get fat. And naturally, that study's been done. In the late 1960s, a study was done with some loose ethical guidelines. In this study, a group of convicts in a prison were fed 10,000 calories per day. 10,000! Can you imagine? And what happened? Well, most of them gained about 20% of their initial weight. And what happened to their TEE? Well, it increased by 50%. To the researchers' surprise, the initial weight gain stabilized, and even more surprising to them was that after the experiment, the subjects rapidly returned to their original weight. In 1992, an experiment overfed its subjects by 50% for six weeks. Their diet was 46% carbohydrate. And naturally, over the six weeks of overfeeding, they gained weight. But after that, they quickly began to lose the weight again. And what about their TEE, you ask? Well, the baseline average before the study was 13.2 megajoules per day, which, for my non-physicist viewers, is roughly 3,150 calories. Well, during the study, the subject's TEE increased on average by 1.4 megajoules per day. This is a metabolic increase of 334 calories per day on average. As expected, or not if you're a calorie counter, the metabolism increased to burn off the excess weight. Once the overeating period ended, the TEE lowered back to baseline, as did all the weight. To quote, We conclude that there was evidence that a physiological sensor was sensitive to the fact that body weight had been perturbed and was attempting to reset it. Huh? It means there is a body set weight and the body will do whatever it takes to stay there. If you try to gain weight by overeating, your body will increase your metabolism. And if you try to lose weight by undereating, then your body will decrease your metabolism. In an interesting experiment, a man named Sam Feltham decided to overeat for 21 days. 
He would eat 5,000 calories of a low-carb, high-fat diet, or LCHF, that consisted only of natural foods. There's a link to the experiment and his diet in the comments, and you can watch my series on LCHF here. The idea here is that it is refined carbohydrates, not total calories, that cause weight gain. If this is true, then he should not gain weight on the diet, despite the high calorie intake. According to standard calorie calculations, he should have gained about 16 pounds, or 7.3 kilograms. His actual weight gain, though, was just under 3 pounds, or 1.3 kilograms. Even more interesting is that his waist measurement dropped by just over an inch, or 3 centimeters. So, what does this mean? Well, it means that while he did gain weight, it was lean mass, or muscle mass, not fat. Now, I can hear the naysayers already. Well, his metabolism is just high, so no matter what he eats, he won't gain weight. Well, luckily enough, Sam did another experiment where he ate a high-carb diet of roughly 5,000 calories per day for 21 days. The ratios of food was very similar to what most nutritional experts recommend. And what happened? Well, he gained the 16 pounds that he expected, and his waist size increased by over 3.5 inches, or 9.25 centimeters. As we can see, it's clearly not the calories that are causing the weight gain. Let's use an analogy here. If your thermostat in your house is set to 86 Fahrenheit, or 30 Celsius, well, that would be pretty hot. So we decide to bring in a portable air conditioner and cool things down. This works for a bit, but then the thermostat kicks on the heater so that the furnace and AC are now fighting each other. It would be far simpler, of course, to just lower the temperature on the thermostat. And that's the problem with the calorie reduction model. We're constantly fighting our own bodies to try and lose weight. Eating too many calories was not the cause of our weight gain to begin with. So how can reducing calories solve it? So what we must determine is twofold. Number one, what controls the body set weight? And number two, how do we adjust this control? But to answer the question we posed originally, does overeating make you fat? And while the reasons are complex, the answer is simple, no. And that wraps up this video. There's obviously much more to be covered in this series, so be sure to subscribe to the channel, and remember to click the bell so that you're updated to new content. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank all my subscribers. Earlier this week, the channel hit 250 subscribers. <laughs> and before I had a chance to make a thank you video, we had blown by that number. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. It, it excites me to know that you are all taking your health into your own hands. And I, I really, I am humbled to be a source that you use to that end. And if I may, I'd like to encourage all of you to learn what you can about type 2 diabetes and how it's treated. Our current treatments are truly harming those with T2D in an effort to help them. Please watch my series on T2D and encourage anyone you know who is fighting with diabetes to watch the videos here and determine for themselves how best to fight this epidemic. Help them use this channel as their gateway to the truth. 250 is an amazing accomplishment. And if we don't gain another one, I'll be satisfied that I've done my best to help. But if we could build this to millions and show the world that the obesity and T2D epidemic cannot be solved by drugs, but instead with knowledge, that would be my dream. Once again, thank you. Remember that you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. And if you enjoy the videos and any of our series, please hit the like button as it does help out the channel. And of course, keep those comments and questions coming. And please, feel free to suggest videos that you'd like us to do. As always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, 
keep being a loser.